What happens when you empower individuals with the tools to achieve situational and personal freedom? When you allow them to break the bonds of traditional restraints, both geographic and cultural, what do they choose to do and how do they do it? Hi, this is Doc from Ready, Set, Crypto with your one minute market update for Tuesday, September 10th. This is gonna be a slightly different market update today. No charts and no trading topics. Mav and I just returned from a three-day business mastermind in Bali, sponsored by Altcoin Magazine. And the consistent theme that we kept experiencing was that all of these talented individuals chose to work from non-traditional locations, often changing their station several times a year due to visa constraints. They were being what's referred to today as digital nomads. So today's market update is an interview with three of our attendees on why they chose to become digital nomads and the benefits that this lifestyle has brought to them. All right, welcome to the special edition of Ready, Set, Live here at Ready, Set Crypto. We are at the Altcoin Magazine Mastermind event in Bali. My name is Doc Severson. I'm joined by Mav and three special guests here today, which we'll introduce in just a minute. Today we're here to talk about freedom, specifically situational freedom, which some call being digital nomads. Those that travel the world with their cell phone and live where they want. And Mav, that's what you've been doing now for the last week or so. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> So where, where have you been going in, in the uh, last couple of weeks? So last week I spent in Tokyo. Uh, after this, I'm going to Thailand. Uh, it's all about just changing the nature of work and how we travel the world and see the world as a more global place. Um, so yeah, I, I think our three panelists here today sort of represent that. And so we'll transition to you know, talking about them. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I represent the old school world where you, know, you joined a company at age 22 and you stayed with them for 40 some years. You got your gold watch and you you die and, and things have changed just in my lifetime. So, uh, and I think it's very, very exciting. So let's get into our three panelists here today. We have uh, Jeff Kurdakis. He is the founder of Uptrend. Jeff, could you tell us what you do at Uptrend? Hey Doc, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Uptrend is essentially a social media platform that pays you to post and engage. And so right now there's a team of about 25 of us working on it. I founded it back in January. So that's it, yeah, we're going strong with that. Yeah, but you're, you're originally from Canada, and you're living where now? Yeah, so I'm living right here uh, with, you're here as I'm well, here, yeah? yeah? So all three of us are living uh, in Bali, uh, primarily Changu as well, yeah? Nice, yeah. Super, okay. And we have with us that uh, woman voice that you heard on there was Natalie Thomas, who is Hello. a solopreneur. Which I is am. A, a great, and uh, so you're a uh, you're rep for out of sight for co-working, and and you do your own, your, you do your own gig. Yeah, I have um, my own businesses, the now with Nat.com, and it's basically, it started off as a blog about mindful travel. Um, I'm, I'm also a yoga teacher, so it transitioned into my yoga practices and yoga teacher, uh, my services. And now I offer retreats worldwide on the site. And then part-time I work with Outsite, a co-living co-working space here in Bali doing their events. Oh, that's outstanding. Yeah. So. Where are you originally from and how long have you been in Bali? I'm from the U.S., kind of from everywhere, most recently L.A. Um, I've been in Bali for about a year. Previously, I was in South America living in Santiago, Chile for a year wow, as that's well. that's great. Yeah. Okay, and our third member here is Sasha Wen, who is a um, single title name, Cryptopreneur, <laughs> which is a great title. But I love that. <laughs> Thanks, Docs. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I used to be a dentist. Um, uh, practiced for a couple of years, but had chronic pain, looked for something else. So I found Bitcoin. I went all in on Bitcoin f um, with the intention in mind. I can always go back to dentistry. And um, yeah, it was really successful, invested in a lot of ICOs and um, went into the crypto circle in, in the whole conference circle 2018, traveled a lot of conferences, worked for blockchain companies. It was a wild ride, it was amazing. And in October or December, December actually 2018 I ended up in Bali after conferences in Bangkok and Singapore I just decided let's spend the winter in Bali focus here and then um, I found the whole um, location independent entrepreneurism in Bali which is amazing community here 
And I found a new passion and new business model, which I now focus on is um, business event management or business event organizing um, in a mastermind style, trying to get people from different industries together and um, could try to get them to collaborate and always integrating blockchain companies in my events, which is quite nice. And I think those companies who already attended, they quite, quite appreciate to get out of the crypto space into other industries at my events. Okay, that's great. I, I just love this whole idea of just liberating ourselves from a physical boundaries of being, you know, like in an office or, or in one location, you can pretty much go anywhere you want. Okay, so. So, all of you live in Bali. Why Bali? <laughs> um, so, Bali was definitely not love at first sight. Absolutely not. So, I came here um, three years ago again for a little time out before I moved as a dentist to Barcelona to Spain because I said, oh, this is my dream city. I want to work there and live there as a, as a dentist, be successful. Came to Bali for a couple of weeks, didn't like it at all. A lot of traffic, a lot of noise, trash. Um, so I went to Barcelona and with thinking I will never come back to Bali. So I came back in December and then found this entrepreneur community and there's so much community here. There's so many people who like to help each other and share their knowledge and want to uplift each other. And there's of course the saying you are uh, the product of the five people you spent the most time with. And here, finally, in Bali, I found um, amazing people, more, way more than five people, who are so encouraging, encourage you to be um, better and to choose just to follow your real passion. And that's what, what I did the last couple of, of months, trying um, really following what I really enjoy doing, creating community, trying to get people together, and f um, combining people who lo love to share the knowledge, f mostly for free, just to help each other grow. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to have a hard time believing that it wasn't love at first sight with Bali. <laughs> but that's cool. Good. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty opposite. I loved it right as soon as I got here. <laughs> uh, for about five years, been going back and forth and now much more full time in Bali. Um, I think the main reason why I like ba Bali is just I feel like what we all strive for in our lives is the feeling of balance. You know, balance between work, life, family, friends, all those kinds of things. And specifically this one area, Changu, where the three of us are in. It just has that perfect balance. It has amazing weather, amazing people. It's ranked the number one place in the world for digital nomads. Um, so the entrepreneur community, as Sasha was saying, is just off the hook. It's really, really good. Um, it, it, it's a vacation every day. You know, you put in eight, ten hours every day, but it feels so drastically different because you can, you know, you can work in the morning, have like a six-hour break for the afternoon for a surf or a workout or whatever, and then plug in back at night. So. The vibe here is really, really good, and like Sasha says, you know, you become the people you surround yourself with. Everyone here is so healthy, so uh, like clear-minded, down to earth. It's really refreshing and a big change of pace from what you could say like everyday life. Um, so for me, actually, Bali was not on my radar at all. I was living in South America in Santiago, and I came across a posting online on I think it was on Facebook, and a yoga company in Ubud was looking for a work exchange. So to bring somebody in and in exchange you get a free yoga teacher training. And they were looking for a blogger. So I randomly submitted my blog, not thinking anything of it. <laughs> sure enough, I got a call that I'm flying to Bali six days later. So I packed up my stuff, went to Bali for the month of May, living in Ubud, and I realized this is the place where I need to be, um, especially doing retreats and teaching yoga and the whole mindfulness community was really strong here. So I went back to Santiago, packed up my stuff in a month, and then moved last July. And when I moved, I was just in Ubud, and I didn't even know Changu existed. And then I stumbled across Changu, of course, and based off of what the both of you guys said too, um, Changu community is huge for entrepreneurs, a lot of like-minded people, and the work and life balance was is amazing there. And of course, you're by the ocean, so you can't beat that. So that's how I wound up in Bali. Oh, that's very cool. And I, I think what we're all here to talk about is sort of the evolving nature of work and yeah for the people that are listening that are probably in like the rat race if it was as easy as moving to bali and just like being able to surf every day then of course everyone would do it but like it takes a lot of hard work too so could you kind of like speak to that as to what it takes to 
live the digital nomad life and sort of embrace it as well. I think we're so conditioned to believe that you need to put in four years and like 100K into a degree and then you get the job and it's this big arduous thing. The reality of the world now is that it, we're in the gig economy and mm -hmm. freelancing is rampant and it's only going to get more and more. So either you adapt with the times or you get left behind and stuck in those old ways. Sure. So if you go on a website like Upwork, you can just cruise and see people are making $20 US an hour for really like tr like uh, virtual assistant tasks, yeah. tasks that don't take more than six weeks worth of education, max, max, max. You could pick a lot of the stuff up in two weeks yeah. and just a little bit of ambition and gusto. And so I think a lot of people like they land in Changu and they, they don't know what they're doing, but then they can just pick up little jobs here and there, helping people out and they can like continue to thrive. And uh, so it, it's super easy. If I was going to give somebody advice, I'd just say go on Upwork, cruise all the jobs on there and be like, okay, which one interests you? And then realize, okay, is there a skill that I need to have to be able to like compete with the other people who are on here? Just pick up that skill, make a listing. And I think you're going to be really surprised at how easy it is to become a, a freelancer, digital nomad. Um, yeah, it was really hard for me because I come from an um, academic background as a dentist and my... My, my speciality was so specialized that it was impossible for me to go into any other industry. So with um, investing in Bitcoin, just gave me su suddenly the, the freedom of time to find something where, where I'm good at, right? And with all these um, this things I did the last couple of two years with co going to conferences, I realized I'm really good in creating community. And um, so that's what I'm focusing right now. But what I, what I realized um, is that it, the best thing to find out how to get out of a nine to five job is if take a month off, come to Bali, go in a co-working space, and just talk with everybody. There's so every day there are so many workshops going on for free. You just go to those workshops, see what everybody does, and and then you you just reprogram your mind in what's even possible, right? Because I didn't think any, I couldn't do any of this what those guys are doing. But then after months and months and months, you just realize, damn it, I that actually there are skills and there are people who can even teach me those skills for little, right? And my, like uh, Jeff said, you don't need to have um, a four year or six year degree to get a job, right? Nowadays, you meet people who um, go with 13 to go on YouTube buy, or go on Facebook, buy a course from somebody for $1,500, learn that course in six weeks and suddenly they're 14 and they're making $1,000 a month. Right, and uh, I met the guy here. He he, um, with 16, he's like this famous guy in crypto. He sold his um, first company with 15, was a millionaire with 15. With 22, he was four-time TEDx talker. Uh, another guy I met here, he with, um, he's selling his company right now for a million dollars, and he's like 22, right? Because he started it when he was 15. So it's it's crazy what kind of people you meet here. So this is the um, like take a month off, take your holiday, come to Bali. You have a holiday, but you meet all those amazing people, and suddenly you realize. There are so many jobs actually out there, and, and there are those ways I, I could do it, and they're cheap. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, of, you know, listening to you guys, and, and trying to put myself in the mindset of somebody that's maybe, let's say they're 29 years old, they've got $100,000 in debt, they're living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and listening to you guys and saying, I can't afford to come out to Bali, that's ridiculous, that, you know, what are these guys talking about? I've got this job and I'm sort of chained to a desk right now. I don't know how to break. What would you say to those people on how to take the first step towards becoming a nomad, towards becoming, you know, like grabbing control of your life and, and making the break? I think based off of what we just talked about, um, there are plenty of job sites out there that you can apply to get remote work. So maybe that just starts with that particular person being remote but in the US for some time and to get used to that remote lifestyle. And then I highly um, recommend investing in yourself and realizing what your true passions are. So while you do have that nine to five job, whether you're in an office, so maybe he doesn't even leave, maybe he stays in his office, but there's something else that he's very passionate about or that person's passionate about that they can utilize their talents and then eventually monetize off of. And it's starting from there and really figuring out what drives you. And it doesn't mean you have to leave your nine to five job overnight, but really just figuring out what your true desire is to do and to serve and to give back and really working on that. Because I think when you put forth the energy into your passions, the way I kind of think it works is it just opens up more opportunity for you. So it's like putting forth that energy while still having your nine to five, which is cool, 
but then just kind of see how it unfolds from there. Um, I think it must be hard like, to have $100,000 in debt. I'm not you're from the US, I'm from Austria, from Europe, so we study for free. But um, I'm met, I've, I, I come from medicine, I have a lot of friends who are in the US and have $100,000, $200,000 in debt. And like my cousin, she studies medicine and she has a lot of debt now she has to work on, on, up to. Um, I hope you have a high paying job and you have this amount of debt, right? So um, what, what could be a possibility? Just cut down your costs, but how does, how, how it all starts with mindset. That's also what I learned here. Like it doesn't matter what you do, just you have to reprogram your mind, right? Don't think about, oh, I'm gonna take an extra job or I'm gonna do this extra or whatever. No, just invest in um, changing how the way you think, right? In think positive, think uh, outside of the box. There's something called from Robert Kiyosaki, he said, uh, financial creativity. You know, if you just go get taught the normal school system and the normal university system, you're taught, oh, this is my job, that's, that's how I make money. But um, the rich people, they are financially creative. I mean, you with your YouTube channel, especially you, you were extremely creative the way you approached it, and that's why you got also so successful. You create content, but also you approached it totally differently. So you got super creative, and that's also a, a big thing which I realize now. Financial creativity, try to uh, learn more about how to change your mindset. It's good, it's really good. I think it's really easy to look at uh, people who live a digital nomad lifestyle and think, oh wow, they got lucky, or they were gifted this thing, or I could never do that. And they just live such an easy life. Wrong, absolutely <laughs> wrong. We all started somewhere, either we took a massive leap of faith and kind of just like, like Sasha's saying, just take a month off and try the thing and just see what that feels like. And if it's exciting enough to you, you're naturally gonna come back to it. But for the people, the majority of people who have that like fear in them and don't have that self-confidence, you gotta work, you know? You only work, let's say eight to 10 hours a day or 12 hours, including your commute. You still have at least another four hours if you're not counting your sleep time to go work on something else. That's essentially, you're put, you can put in another 20 hours of work per week, not including the weekends. So you can put in another 40 hours, you can work 80 hours a week. It sounds crazy, but it's not when you're driven with a purpose. And when your purpose is freedom of yourself, your situation, um, like where you live, how, what you can do, that to me is like, that's purpose enough. And so if that doesn't light your fire, then maybe it's not for you and comfort is what you're best suited at. Yeah, I want to touch on that last point because I, I think this question doesn't get asked enough. What do you consider to be bad advice when it comes to being a solopreneur, a cryptopreneur, a digital nomad? Like, what would you caution people against when considering a lifestyle like this or rethinking their work-life balance? Uh, priority. That's the biggest thing. So is your family your priority? If so, maybe it's not the lifestyle for you. Yeah. Or if you're like, oh, I have a dog or I have what, generally it's family and friends. Um, I think that's just it. When you can like kind of list down what are your priorities and if family's at the top and being close to, you know, like your, your mother who's kind of in the later stages of her life, maybe it's not the best time. Yeah. But uh, if your priority is like personal freedom, take that leap. And I think a sense of security as well, like going back to the um, comfort, um, having a sense of security for sure, because in Changu and living abroad, you meet so many people, you essentially come alone unless you come maybe with a friend or so, but it's a very transient place and you do have to get used to being alone and being not having, we're so far from home, so not having you know, maybe your family there um, coming or if you're really super close friends and uh, you meet so many great people in Changu and in Bali but it can be very transient people leave and they come back and it's really adapting to that change and really going with the flow um, because things tend not to stay stagnant here <laughs> they're always changing in some crazy way so it's being able to adapt to a change very well and um, one more thing I've, I think the worst advice you can give anybody is just um, work really really hard on the new thing but um without really thinking without changing the way you're thinking about work so for me i had to change the whole uh, my whole profession right i have to um, work, learn a whole new skill but if you um if you don't figure out your brain and your your your, your emotions more or less you get burned out so fast and that's what mm -hmm. natalie um is, is specialized in mindfulness right so really tap into how to be happy in in really dark situations 
So and as an entrepreneur, especially a solopreneur, you have so many situations where you where, where you you have dark moments because you just you, you're responsible for yourself, right? You're making decisions, you're making bad decisions, you lose money. Suddenly, damn, that's not good. I should have. I just lost so much. But if you go into mindfulness, you just realize, or into positive mindset, you realize, no, that was just one small step for my, to my success in the future. It's all good. It was the best decision I could make in that moment, and I'm all good. All will be fine. Yeah, that's that's great, and I I want to touch on that a little bit more because what do you consider to be like good advice or like what is your inspiration who do you look to like tony robbins grant cardone like the traditional type or like is it more like yourself do you like where do you draw that inspiration from i, I think yeah like you summarize the best the ones that i'd suggest yeah like <laughs> like um yourself obviously plays a, the the leading role and then like the self will guide you to those figures that are already living the life that you want to live. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you gravitate towards Tony Robbins, maybe you gravitate towards Osho, maybe you gravitate towards uh, Gary Vee. They're all different personalities and they drive you towards the place where you wanna be. And there's lots of people out there who are kind of like spinning their verses on you know what to do and how to do it, but in reality, the guys who are at the top and actually have a proven track record aren't just spitting hot air. So although they're kind of overplayed, in a, especially in, on media, they have a lot of great advice and they've already done it. So you can, you know, you can trust them. Yeah, so I'm Austrian. I have to see Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was going to say every time you, since you told me that now, every, I'm like channeling Arnold through you. <laughs> yeah, it's, you remember when he said, um, sleep faster? <laughs> faster. Stay, <laughs> stay hungry. Yeah. I don't have much. I, mean, to, I don't have enough hours per day. Then sleep faster. <laughs> and um, I like the term also. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, big um, advocate of work hard and work long. But then also Robert Kiyosaki and a lot of people say just work smarter, not harder. So I'm, I'm, and having more financial creativity, learn, cre be creative. Then you work less and be more happy about it. And maybe you you actually don't mind putting more, more hours of work in. So um, that's my mentors at the moment, but I think your mentors change over time. So I started with Gary Vee, like Gary Vee gave me so freaking much motivation. It was unreal doing, during uh, the crypto craziness when I put in like 12, 14 hours a day. And I remember the 1st of January, 2018, when Bitcoin started to crash, I was like not feeling good at all. I put in one video of Gary Vee and I just got motivated for like 20 hours straight. It was unfreaking real. I was dancing on my computer, it was <laughs> crazy. But now I'm not watching any Gary Vee videos, so your mentors change over time. Yeah, and based off of those are amazing mentors, and even for me, I like, I, I don't know if you guys heard of Gabrielle Bernstein, but she has a nice mix of the mindfulness community and meditation and um, self-help practices. And, um, but yeah, it's really just the inner drive that you have and knowing that that changes over time. So when I first came abroad, I did not know I would be doing retreats. I just knew I really was into the mindfulness community for at the now for seven years and which involved into yoga, which involved into retreats because I used to do event planning. So just by starting off with something small, it can definitely snowball and you realize what your skill set is and what you're not good at as well. So you don't have to have it all figured out or be like, oh, this, my mentor is up here. Just start small. And, but it is getting that motivation and, and listening to good podcasts and reading, and reading the books and really doing the work to even what you were saying, Sasha, like changing your mindset and having that help. But then the drive does come from within. Well, you guys have given some great advice here today. I just, uh Wanted to, to finish up here on just one question for each, each of you, if you want to go in line here. Like, what is the biggest challenge that you had to solve as a nomad? What is the biggest thing that you had to solve? You know, because what we're trying to do is, like, reach out to that person that's, you know, just stuck in their job right now and just can't figure out how to get out of it. So all they can think of are the problems and the reasons why they can't do something like that. So. Hopefully, uh, by you sharing this, you're going to be able to unlock something for these people. So, again, like, if you guys want to go in a row and just, like, what is the biggest challenge you had to solve and how would you do it? The biggest challenge um, has definitely been mindset and what we've been talking about, just knowing. Because, and I say mindset because coming from the U.S., we're very programmed to live a certain way, to have the 9-to-5 job, 
to then at this age you get a family at this age you have children then you have to get the house and it's very there's a there's this like step that you're told throughout your entire life so stepping outside of the box it kind of shakes things up and it can be mentally draining like am i making the right decision you can put yourself down and it's really being in a good headspace and being okay where you're at even though it might be different than what the norm is doing and people might tell you that you can't do it and knowing that you can so it's all about that inner self belief and changing your mindset of how the world can work and that there's no blueprint on how to live life. Uh, for me, I th and I think a lot of people relate to this, probably the vast majority is just overcoming the fear, leaving the comfort, and just taking the leap, like all those things wrapped into one. And uh, kind of the way that I was able to overcome it was just by asking myself this kind of like morbid, crazy question, but the question is, will I die? You know, if I do this thing, if I take the risk, will I die? Because if I don't, I know that I, I can I can continue to live and I'll be able to like make a life out of myself. So it's like if I'm $100,000 in debt and I'm just like screaming to get out of this and I'm stuck and I hate my life. If I go and I take this leap to try to live a life that I want to live and it doesn't work. Well, like what's then I'm just back to where I was before anyways, maybe a little bit worse, but I'm not dead. And so I can continue on forward and try to take another leap at it. Like my whole thing is, is like, I'm going to take a leap. If I fail, I'm going to come back. I'm going to work some half-baked construction job, make X dollars an hour for the summer. And then I'm, I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to, if I fail, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it again and do it again. And that was my, just like knowing that it's going to be okay. If you just have a little bit of like grind and grit under you, you can push through. So that, that was it for me. <clears throat> um, big one for me was um, you have to believe 100% in the decision you take. Um, if you struggle with that, then probably the, the job or the thing you're doing right now is not really for you. It's not the thing you're really passionate about. So that, that was crystal clear for me. And at some point, a couple of months ago, I, 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 was, I, was, I was producing something, I was working, but I didn't really believed in what I was doing. I was doubting myself all the time. I finished the work, I went out here in Bali, beautiful, everything, beautiful people, but I was doubting, I was not happy. And um, and now everything I do, um, I really also like doing what I'm doing, it's hard work. And if I make wrong decisions, I don't care because I feel like that was the best decision I could do. I, I believed in it 100%, it was okay, it was good. Now I learned, I made a mistake, doesn't matter. So. And it, it was, it, it's clear for me now that what I do now, it's what I really like to do just because of that feeling, right? So last event, I, we, I made a mistake. I didn't care at all. You know, people complained a little bit. I just was happy. I knew, man, it doesn't matter. I just, I, I'm still 100% okay with it. But I want to throw the question back to you guys because I'm a fan of your channel since 2017. So how, what was your motivation to do that? And because you had you were a trader for I don't know how many years, right? You worked in banking. So what was your motivation to go completely out of the box to be that creative to create that? Well, I, I've been doing my own thing since uh, 2005. And it was like a bolt of lightning out of the blue when I determined what it was that I needed to do the rest of my life. And it was like, so everything that you guys have said, I mean, it's like I had to burn my bridges. I had to just, you know, shut down everything else and you know work six hours at night after i'd come home from spending you know a 10-hour day just do whatever you had to do and then actually when i found that charlie here was getting into crypto it was like wow that's really cool and, you know tell me more about it and then you know we we found a way to to have you know the best of both worlds you know and to be able to to work with this guy is 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 a lot of fun and yeah I mean, I, I was, you know, a corporate drone in the rat race working Fortune 500, and I hated my life. And, you know, that, that's a pretty common story. But for me, yeah, taking the, the leap of faith was, was a big deal in terms of just, like, I left a lot of security and, and cushy, you know, golden handcuffs almost to, to go into something that's very, you know, who knows how it's going to work out. But that's okay. Uh, I remember hearing this story. Uh, it's Maybe it's fake. I don't know. But it's from... Mm -hmm. World War II, and it's the story of a guy, and he's like 
trying to storm this like pillbox and you know like his with his platoon and like they got to go up there they got to charge up the hill to like you know take the hill but like he's terrified he's he's absolutely afraid of like you know dying and he's, he's sitting there like well what do i do do i run away do i like run away from this battle or do i, I go up the hill and then finally he makes the decision i'd rather go up the hill and have them find my body with the bullet holes in the front rather than in the back mm-hmm. you know? and so like Maybe that's a little bit dramatic as to like what it is we do here, uh, but like it, it's that it's the it's the ethos of like you know just having the courage to to take the leap, to know who you are, and then like charge up the hill. So yeah, it's it's been it's been the most terrifying, but also the most rewarding thing ever is to to, to you know like embrace who you are and go after that. So cool. All right, well uh, we'll sign this off here but thank you so much guys we really appreciate you hanging out with us and uh, having a good talk here and uh, thanks for watching guys it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun i hope you get, got something out of this thank you man. yeah well, just uh, again our, our three guests today were natalie thomas uh, jeff kardakis and sasha arnold Wynn. so <laughs> thanks everybody for for joining us appreciate your time guys and great words of wisdom thanks doc thanks john thanks doc and keep doing what you're doing guys